This year we're showing films, uh, about 225 films from 92, 93 countries. And uh, this is one of our best so far. Well, I think the, uh, the eclecticness of the films, you know, this year we have a lot of U.S. premieres, West Coast premieres. The lineup is just, it's, it's very colorful. And the technology keeps changing. How on earth do you keep up with it? A lot of reading material in the bathroom. You're the star of the big skateboarding movie, am I right? No, no, no. no. <laughs> I have a trick in it. It's okay. easy. You, just do, you flip around a little useless wooden toy. You have to be a film lover in order to watch over 3,000 films a year in order to select a few uh, among all those. <laughs> Uh, my short is called Justin's Lot, and it's an eight-minute film about a uh, Boy Scout from a dysfunctional home who goes to the flea market to try to raise money for scout camp with his grandparents. I think film festivals, this f film festival in particular, is, is a crossroads of journeys. You know, every film comes from a, a story, a thought, and... Uh, I think it's, it's just a crossroad of all these worlds and cultures and, and, and journeys. Noncia and Saeed and their, their vision and their intention for the film festival is so important to me to really truly understand the world through film. We need all you lovely people to come out and acknowledge and support and have a good time with us. Sound barrier tonight. How was it? It was absolutely great. You got to see it. What was it about? It was about an 11 year old kid um, that's deaf and mute, and he's trying to find out about this uh, uh, cassette that his mother left him. So you're happy with your work and, and with the audience's reaction? I, I surprised. They crowded over there. I, I like it. So is this one of the best places to show your films? Uh, yes, uh, I'm come because uh, uh, I'm interested in the um, in the tem in the topic of the festival. Yeah. It is a coming of age girls soccer movie with great soccer action and a really sweet uh, story at the same time. And I was coaching my kids in soccer, like every other dad in America, I think. And I had story had come to me, and I wrote the story. I brought a, a buddy of mine, Tony Vidal, to co-write it. And it was one of those things that everybody enjoyed making, and you know, there was a lot of support for it. The, child, the interaction for the kids with the director was phenomenal. They could ask questions, and it was, it was really very personable and right on target for children and for adults who coach. It was great. Uh, let's move! We wanted to create a really wholesome film that the whole family could see. And what, what's the name of the movie? Uh, after that, Bailey. Oh, that ball. <laughs> It's such a wonderful thing that Tiburon has its own film festival, and it's fantastic. On Wednesday, Welcome to the Terror Dome, which is a public enemy movie, is going to be happening. So I'm going to check that out for sure. Most of the films at this film festival are wonderful little, little odd films that we would never have an opportunity to see anywhere else. So we always enjoy spending this week in Tiburon, and we really plan for it, and we love it. Where, where are you from? Uh, San Rafael. And you came all the way down here. We had a commitment to make a movie with Jack Nicholson, who was just emerging as a star from his performance in Easy Rider. So the mandate was really to create a vehicle for Jack Nicholson. And to that end, uh, I found a writer named Carol Eastman, who was not really well known, but she was very talented. And she had been in acting school with Nicholson and knew him very well. And she wrote a script to, to really take advantage of all of his resources. So it's really like having a, a suit made by a tailor as opposed to taking one off the rack. Very unlike the way it's generally done where a studio gets a script and then they go out and they find someone to play the part. Was the reaction from the crowd any different than you would have expected? Yeah, for me it was great because I don't know, here in the United States it's a different, different culture like in Spain, but for me the reactions were always the same. They love with the same things, and it was interesting. In, in, in that moment, uh, we were very, it, it was a very kind of anti-studio uh, ethos, and we were really trying to make a European film. Everyone was just obsessed. I mean, when I say everyone, I mean the young filmmakers were obsessed with 
the, the Nouvelle Vague with the Italians, with Bergman. So the idea was to do something that was really <coughs> very character-based as opposed to a very plotty film. And, you know, the movie doesn't have a lot of plot to it. It's really based on these, you know, these very detailed characters. Five easy pieces. Did you ever see this movie before? Yes, I did, a long time ago. And uh, what did this movie mean to you? I didn't understand it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I just think I was a little young to understand what w the filmmaker was driving at at the time. But uh, since then, I've really come to appreciate films from the 60s and 70s. And so um, I think that was the golden decades for filmmaking. So I'm excited about seeing it again. Romanian films are the best. And why? Oh, because it's been such an oppressed country and now they're coming out into politics, into America. It's becoming part of the UN. It's, it's growing, so it's beautiful. I thought the film we saw tonight about the twins was incredibly fabulous. One with a hat. One, if you look it up, and it says hat in the uh, Tiburon Film Festival. I look up the one with a hat, and I will be there. <laughs> Valerina is an uh, uh, important uh, movie. Important movie. Oh. I was singing on the stage as in my Celtic troubadour guise. Um, I'm also an actor. I've got a film coming out this year called Honest Man, a docu-feature about our Bud Dwyer, who uh, quite a controversial film. He committed suicide in front of a, a live press conference. Are you a good piper? Am I a good piper? Am I a good piper? There you go. Yeah, I'm very happy with uh, with my presentation here, with the stage here, my, my stage here, and with the reaction to all the people that watch the film. I'm very happy to answer all the questions. So for me, it was a great experience. Okay, we're here with Kimmy. And uh, you do a morning show. What's that all about? Yes, I do. I work at KBLX Radio in San Francisco, 102.9, The Quiet Storm. And we're here celebrating the arts in Tiburon, and it's a beautiful night. We're excited for the films. You can just tell all the hard work that's gone into the festival this year. And is this the first time you've been to the Tiburon Festival? Absolutely. It's the first time I'm a rookie, but awesome. I'm very excited. Oh, I really enjoy movies. I would probably watch them 24 hours if I could stay up that long. Right. That's a lot of Red Bull, isn't it? <laughs> a lot of coffee for me. The entire festival is run by many uh, dedicated and great volunteers that uh, joined us in the past few years and this year especially and we are very grateful to all of them. And I'm just honored to be able to work with him and to learn from him and to help him uh, in, in making this whole thing a reality. It really means a lot when you put your film out there and you get rejection after rejection and someone accepts it and it makes you feel really special. It makes you want to keep going. So. Thank you very much, and this is a very, very well-run festival. It's such a wonderful thing that Tiburon has its own film festival, and it's fantastic. You're doing a good job. Keep it, keep it up. So, we love him. Say it is wonderful. Yeah. Salam, Ali Manjum, and merci for the movie. Thank you. Looking forward to the next year, number eight. Um, you know, rock on. Uh, thank you. You know, it's been. Uh, a wonderful experience these last eight years. Hey, Saeed, you dreamed it, you did it, congratulations.